The future object also has a few methods that are worth us talking about because they will help you when you want to work with a number of futures. We've already used the apply method. That was how we created our futures. There are some basic methods that will create futures that have failed for some exception or that were successful with some result. The ones that we want to focus on are things that actually combine multiple different futures. And there are several of those, but we're going to focus on two in particular. The two we're going to work on are the first completed of and sequence. First completed of, you give it a, and the, technically the type is traversable once, so any collection of futures on some type T, and it will give you back a future that represents whichever of those completes first. Okay, so why would you want to create a whole bunch of futures and only deal with the one that completes first? The answer to that is in applications where, for example, you're getting information from multiple sources and you only need to get it from one to complete your task. Maybe you're writing a website that is uh, supposed, you know, one of the things it's supposed to display is, is weather information and you have three or four sites that you can get the weather information from, but you only need it from one of them. So you hit all three of them and then you take the one that finishes first. Another method is the sequence method, and this takes a traversable of futures and gives you back a future of the traversable. So I had a whole bunch of different futures that were all inside of some collection, and it will allow me to convert from that collection of futures of some type to a future of a collection. So it's kind of the, the inverse, whereas the first completed of tells me which one finishes first. The sequence is wait for them all to complete and give me back a sequence of all of their results. So let's go ahead and let's use some of these things in our code. And as was mentioned, these are kind of helpful when you're retrieving information from other places. It turns out sequence actually has quite a few uses to it, but I'm gonna use the same set of code to, to do both. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to load some web pages in. And I'm going to do these inside of various futures. Now, we've previously seen how you can do io.source, and there's a from file in here, but there is also a from URL where you can pass it the string for a URL. And I want to actually use. We'll start with Google's page. So this will give us back an iterator of Google's page. And I don't actually need to see the whole page. I'm just going to take the first 100 characters of that, make that into a string. OK. So that's our first future. Well, in addition to Google, how about we also pull down, say, page 2 is going to be Facebook, page three is going to be YouTube, and we could add others to this list as we wanted. And then I can make a list of these. So all three of those futures are now part of this one collection. And we can say val first, we'll call it first page, equals, we're going to use first completed of, and we're going to pass it pages. So that gives us back a single future that represents whichever one of these three completes first. So if I want to see which one that is, and actually let's go ahead and, and so we know what it is, let's go ahead and let's put a little string identifier in front of each of these. Okay. And then as we've seen previously, I can simply take first page dot for each and print line that. So that will schedule it so that once that future is completed, it will print out. And then we have our five second pause. And let's try that. 
On the first run, YouTube uh, completed first. Run it again. YouTube completed first again. I wonder if that is something that would be fairly consistent. And again, so apparently, now I will note that YouTube seems to be responding with nothing there. Uh, bloop, bloop. Let's do one quick little test here. Print line. So YouTube is responding to our request with no page at all. That is very interesting. What if instead of YouTube, we try Twitter here? Now the first one was Facebook, but Facebook also seems to be responding with a blank page. Well, that's very interesting. Anyway, so we're able to combine these. We should ha we'd have to play around a little bit just for funsies. Okay, so Google gave us back a page. Um, that's interesting to note. I uh, wonder if there's, if I'm having communication problems with those other two sites. But anyway, this combination using the first completed the first completed of gives us back just whichever one gives us back the information first. What if instead I wanted all of them? Well, let's go ahead and let's comment out those lines. So I could say all pages equals future dot sequence of pages. So pages was a list of futures of strings and all pages is a future of list of strings. So that once it completes, if we print it, we should get the contents of all of them and it shouldn't complete until they are all done. So I get a list with Google there and once again, Facebook and Twitter are sending us back nothing. Uh, this could also have something to do with the fact that Facebook and Twitter like you to be logged in. Uh, we don't, uh, maybe because something that we're not sending them because we're not a browser they're unhappy with. Uh, but Google allows you to pull stuff even when you're, uh, when you're not logged in or don't have any additional information. Anyway, these are different ways that we can combine the results of futures or combine futures together to get a new future that has the results that we're interested in and that helps us work with our futures. So first completed of and sequence are very helpful methods uh, if you're going to be playing with futures a fair bit.